So in today's video, I'm going to be putting the lower unit back together, getting this uh, bearing uh, carrier back in there. Um, if you saw the last video, uh, it was a little bit brutal getting it out. Uh, here's some quick shots of uh, what I had to do to take it apart. So I did replace the bearing. Uh, this is the old one. Um, after the beating it took, it's probably fine, but I figure as long as I have it apart, let's go ahead and get that. And I also uh, replaced the uh, thrust washer. Now, I did take these to a shop. I don't have a press, so I didn't get a video of uh, pressing this together, but basically it entailed pressing the bearing uh, onto the reverse gear and then pressing the whole assembly over the uh, thrust washer and pressing it into the uh, into the uh, bearing carrier so I got that done um, now it's just a matter of uh, putting it all back together so let me go ahead and get started with that um, if you're interested in how I got this thing apart which was frozen solid after 20 years uh, you can look at this uh, video right here and um, see the ultimate steps I got the old uh, to get the old bearing carrier out so let's get started so some of the things we'll be using uh, to put this together is I did break down and I bought some of the uh, Quicksilver 24C Teflon or with PTFE grease. Um, I've got my old trusty BRP heavy duty grease, but it also gave me the opportunity to buy uh, a high capacity torque wrench which goes up to 250 uh, foot pounds because um, it calls for 220 foot pounds to get the uh, retaining nut onto the bearing carrier and uh, my old I have a good one but it's only got up to about 160 foot pounds so it gave me the opportunity to get a new tool I'll put a link to it in the description below all right the first thing we're going to do is uh, get the propeller shaft in there and uh, one of the things that we have to do to the propeller shaft is get the uh, shifter mechanism in there now what mercury calls for is to bed that in some of that 24c grease so we'll do that and actually will help hold it together what they say to do is to take the uh, propeller shaft and put a coating of grease the 24c grease in there so we'll do that and then the uh, shifter mechanism itself goes in there it actually is marked it says up on it you want to get that in there in the middle position like so and uh, that basically is neutral right there get it lined up nice and flush and after that it's just a matter of carefully sliding it in there till it bottoms out right there now there's also a thrust washer here. I'm going to coat it with grease, put it back on there. In the same way it came out. Now what I want to do at this point is get the shifter in there. Um, here's the uh, shifter itself the shift rod um, I need to put some grease on this part which I will all right it's a little hard to see but what we want to do is get it in in there make sure it seats into that shift connector there we go we can get that started and I want to make sure it's in neutral which it is all right, now we're going to focus our attention on um, preparing the uh, bearing carrier. And uh, pretty simple, actually. Uh, it's just a matter of getting an O-ring on there and uh, getting a good layer of grease on everything. So let me go ahead and do that. This O-ring goes behind the thrust washer. Now, having experienced the difficulty of getting one of these guys off, 
I'm going to be a little generous with the grease. And yes, the outside's going to get a, a fair coating of it because if I ever have to pull this thing out again, I don't want to destroy it like I did the last one. And also, the needle bearings in there, I'm going to give them a nice coating of the uh, triple guard. I've already got some in there, but I'll show you basically what I did. Kind of like packing bearings. Mercury says to use their own grease. I happen to like this BRP grease. It's pretty, pretty heavy. I do want to point out there's a little indentation there's a little key that goes in there but manual specifically says to get this started in there before you put the key in so that's what we're going to do let's get this guy on index key down and we'll have to wiggle it in lined up now it's gonna have to go in a little further so I got this uh, just to get the seals over the expansion in the uh, prop shaft all right just want to make sure it stays in neutral all right, the next thing that goes on is this ring locker. Now, unfortunately, I had to straighten this one out and reuse it. Uh, my supplier, even though I ordered it, did not send me one. And uh, a little disappointed in that. But uh, we're going to get that in place. So the next thing we're going to do is get the uh, ring nut, I guess that's what it's called, in place. I've got a brand new replacement one. Now, here's what I feel to understand. Um, I've seen this other YouTuber who really seems to know what he's doing. I mean, he, he seems pretty sharp, but uh, he coated this thing in gasket maker. Now, experiencing the amount of difficulty that I did to get this thing apart, I can't imagine why you would do that. Um, Mercury actually calls to give it a fair coating of this, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to be generous. If I ever have to take this thing apart again, I, I, I don't want to go through the experience I did before. And matter of fact, I'm starting to wonder if it may not be a good idea to actually uh, take these out every once in a while. Just re lubricate them and inspect the drive shaft, which you're probably supposed to do anyway. So anyway, I've got this lubricated. The way this goes in is the indented pieces go inside. There's writing on the outside and drill points, so you, it's pretty pretty obvious. Let's start this off by hand. I absolutely do not want any cross threading. What I found in, when I was test fitting everything was that it was easier to use this uh, drive nut and to find catch a good thread. There we go. Now this guy uses or requires 220 foot pounds. I'm actually going to mount the lower unit before I go any further because it would be quite something if I managed to break the skeg off uh, while having it mounted in a vise and trying to put 220 foot-pounds of torque on this thing. Going to go as far as I can manually and uh, then we'll go for torquing. Let me 
make sure that the uh, locking ring stayed in place. All right. I'm going to take it out to the boat, get the lower unit mounted, and then apply the final torque to that piece. Install the prop, fill the lower unit up with uh, fluid, and we should be done with this and hopefully move on to the next uh, projects on this boat. So one thing I did want to point out is I'm going to clean the top of the uh, shaft and um, apply grease along the sides of it. It's got some old nasty grease on it already. So let me go ahead and do that. Let's get this thing cleaned up. I'm going to use that thick mercury grease. Whatever you do, don't put any on the top. Um, that's been known, or at least I've been told, could cause kind of a vapor lock. And uh, you really don't want that. Getting that thing locked up when you're trying to pull a lower unit is a real pain. Um, I've had an old Johnson I was working on that was frozen. And uh, if you, you can look at this video right here and see how I finally ended up getting that thing apart. All right, let's take this out and get it mounted. All right, we've been delayed. We've had some freezing rain, snow, a bunch of stuff, but uh, I think we're in the tail end of it. So I finally got the uh, lower unit on, and um, it, was, it was a little bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, I may actually do a video on the best way or the easiest way to remove these things and reinstall them. But for right now, lower unit is on, so I'm ready to torque on uh, the retainer. So I've got the big honking torque wrench. I've got the uh, tool to get it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and torque this to 210 foot-pounds and um, hopefully not break anything off. Oh, here we go. That should be 210 foot-pounds. Now, you gotta make sure one of these tabs lines up, and this one's just a hair off. You don't wanna loosen this, what you wanna do is give it a little bit more. And it looks like I'm gonna get lined up with that tab, so I'm gonna go ahead, bend that tab outwards. All right, that's bent in there. That's torqued into 210 foot-pounds. Um, we're good to go, I'm gonna put the prop on. Prop gets torqued to 50 foot-pounds, but let me go ahead and grease the shaft first. You know, the stuff is, you almost gotta step on it. Doesn't help that it's cold. And yes, I am stepping on it. I'm also going to apply a fair amount of grease to this washer. All right. Get this lock ring on there. Start this off. And of course, I've got the big honking one, which will do. I set it for 50 foot pounds. Just the weight of this thing is driving it.
and you want to make sure those pins are aligned so you can lock it in they click to 50 it's okay to go more so I'm just going to line up three of those pins and bend them in there we go we got three of them bending so this is done all right, so we're done with the lower unit. Uh, the only thing I got left to do is really put some lower unit fluid in it. Um, I did replace the screws because uh, they were the wrong ones. They probably came out of a shop and uh, the lower one's supposed to be a magnetic pickup um, screw. Top one's just you know standard one. But we're pretty much done. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, hit share and like. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe. And your comments are also welcome. Please let me know what you think of this video and what other things you'd like to see in the future.